I remember the first time they told me I was going to be a scout. And I said, that's wonderful. What do I do? Will you find a ball player? Find a ball player? What does that mean? So they gave me a black book. I opened up the black book. The pages were blank. A baseball scout is charged with the inconceivable, seeing the future. It's the guy that looks into a player and sees the intangibles and is able to say, this guy is going to make it to the big leagues. Somebody had to find the diamond in the rough. Somebody had to find the needle in the haystack. They went into the bushes, that's what we called it. They went into the bushes to find guys. They cannot make stars, yet they must decide what players would become legends if the stars aligned. I had no idea what I was looking at my first event, and I'm just like thinking to myself, can, can I do this? Like, do I have what it takes to be a scout? A good scout's not just an evaluator a talent. He has to be a detective in a certain way to find out all he can about the young players. Because when you go scout a player, the thing you're looking for is not so much throwing, fielding, because you can tell that quickly when you're a scout. What you're trying to find is what he's got inside of him. I don't think baseball can be completely equated into a math problem. Maybe how the kid walks onto the on-deck circle, or how he handles himself after a game. You have to take all these external components into account. You don't have a radar gun to measure someone's heart. And that's what your main job is as a scout, is to try and discover what's inside that player. Because statistics can't measure that. Hank Aaron hit cross-handed and didn't hustle. Babe Ruth was thought to be a better pitcher than hitter. Derek Jeter was thought to be a middling prospect to all but a few scouts. And Wade Boggs, who would enter the Baseball Hall of Fame as one of the greatest hitters of all time. He was a below average runner. He was a below average thrower. He was a below average fielder. He had below average power, but he could hit a little bit. That was the report until a Boston Red Sox scout named George Digby weighed in. George uh, had that unique ability to find that diamond in the rough. He could sit there and look at a hitter and say, this kid's got a chance. To look at a 17, 18 year old kid and try to project them to where they would be at age 21 or 22 or 25 or 30, I mean, it's, it takes a special eye and a special talent. He wasn't looking out for me. He was looking at a guy named Alonzo Perry. First baseman. I think when he saw me, he switched from Perry to me. And that's when they came by the house and signed me. When he came over to sign me, he and my dad killed a whole bottle of spinata. <laughs> the most difficult part is being away a lot, especially if you're married and you have children. I don't know how scouts did it before they had GPS. Sometimes you get home at 10 at night and you've driven 300 miles that day. It is like being in the Foreign Legion. People don't understand scouting. Scouting is probably harder than playing. I mean, let's be honest, like we're playing to win a World Series. How are you gonna go to your boss and tell a guy, I just have a feeling? 29 teams may not like a guy, one team may. And that's all it takes is to give, to give that kid a shot. Every player is like a jigsaw puzzle. And the more pieces you can put into that jigsaw puzzle, the better chance you have of making a, a correct judgment. Toughest job in baseball is the area scout. I know they put in more time, more effort, uh, driven more miles in their car, stayed in crappier hotels, got paid less to, what, enable us the greatest thrill of a lifetime? You just wonder why God puts people like that on the earth to find people like me. For more than a hundred years, these devoted scouts have remained in the shadows of baseball's greatest legends until now.